I pretty much would either agree with that schedule or not, and they would have to work around what I felt I was going to do. Most of the individuals, they don't have that ability to look people in the eye and say no. In other words, you you know, the the, the match is really created in, in the locker room. And if you don't compete in, during that period of time, it's over before it starts. Mm. You know, if he if he says, you know, this is a, we're going to do this, and then we're going to do this, and we're going to do this, and you just go, hmm, yeah, sounds good. Well, but well, as a new guy, shouldn't I do that? Well, not if you want to be around. Not if I want to live. Not if you want to <laughs> make a be, living, be around and collect a paycheck. You're sitting here watching Ric Flair return to the company and strap an NWA belt on someone else when you're sitting there with the WCW title. Do <clears throat> you have a problem with that? Uh, you know what? I was... In other words, if I knew what I knew now, and if you've heard this, um, uh, it, just in terms of politics, you know, what I could have accomplished, if I understood the wrestling game from a politic standpoint, uh, like I know it now. For example, that moonsault, it just, he didn't want me to do it, and I said, wait a minute, you don't want me to do something uh, in the ring? You're questioning, you know, what I want to do in the ring, and I, Wow, I'd never been approached like that. And, uh, he said, yeah, you're 400 pounds. You don't need to be flying around like Peter Pan. And uh, So Ole, you know, actually told me no. And being that individual who I was at that time. Um, oh, so what does he say to Ole, that old Leon White that doesn't exist? Uh, you know, not much. It was pretty short. Couple, couple words. Couple of words. A couple of words, and uh, involve one of these fingers. <laughs> <laughs> was Bill Watts's tenure with WCW a good one? Um, I, I, I uh, wow, this is really hard. But I could take 365 and jump, press uh, it 15 times. So. Right. Uh, and he saw me doing that in the gym, and it was it was it was unique the way he treated me after the, he saw that. He walked in the gym, like, "Hey, Vader," and he was like, "I need to talk to you." And I said, "You know," I looked over and I said, "Yeah, you're gonna wait a minute because I'm gonna finish the set," you know. And uh, and by the way, I don't don't like my workout being interrupted anyway. So, and I did it 15 times, and and yeah, it was just this uh, I don't know. Just change. Attitude change? Yeah. Yeah, yeah it, it, it was kind of fun. Physically, I was at the top of my game and certainly could have went, went back to uh, Japan and, and uh, probably set records in terms of, I mean, there, there, there were stories about what, what Andre and what Stan and, and Bro, Bru, Bruiser had made uh, uh, on a weekly basis, you know, uh, you know, cash money type thing. Did you come close? Uh, yeah, I came very close. Kudoki. Well, two things for me that I'm told was, was never done, you know. Uh, he paid me a great deal of money uh, on a weekly basis. Um, he would, uh, in certain towns, he would just have little surprises to come to my hotel where uh, females, masseuses would come to my room and, and, and of course, give legitimate, uh, saying this into the camera, massages, uh, you know, hours and hours feet massages and rubs and they would, you know, they bathe you and, you know, uh, just things like that, things that would happen, you know, because uh, for a period of what, two or three years there running, uh, we were sold out every night. What about your pairing with Sid? Um, that's what I was just getting to. We both, I think, were trying to outmonster each other. One of us needed to calm down and talk. You know, the thing that I, I impressed me about Harley was, um, you, know, I, you know, I'm the world champion, and of course, he was my, my teacher, my mentor. He wanted me to do well, because that, that was an obvious connection. And, but he, in front of the guys, he would, he would, he would rarely, if ever, uh, uh, what's the word, I'm, instruct me. You know, instruct me, but we'd get alone down the road and, and uh, yeah, you remember that spot, and he'd uh -huh. get into it. You remember this situation at this moment, and he would get into it that way. 
Mick is kind of like a wrestling savant. I mean, obviously he's an intelligent man and everyone's figuring that out. If he's, if he is 99.99999999% of the time, always the smartest guy in the ring. Mick walked up to Harley and I and said that he has an idea. And oh, here we go. And Leon, don't wear your gloves. Just put some tape on your wrist, don't wear your gloves. And uh, you know, when you hit me, twist it and, and cut me, cut me, and and then do it over here, and you know, puff my nose and, and cut my forehead up, and uh, I'll feed over to Hardy, and then Hardy can do it. And there was a blade involved, and it was taped in in Steve's hand in his fingers, and he was using it to cut himself, mm -hmm. and he had forgot it was there, and and was at the end of the match, and actually after I'd won, and sliced up my ear to the, sliced up my eardrum to the point where it bled, and I literally couldn't get off the mat. Everyone, everyone is drinking. Everybody, agents, everybody, and um, everyone had pills, and everyone's well. What do you got? Okay, and there's just there's there's just massive exchange rate of of, of he had blood just squirting out of his. And it was just every time his heart pumped, it just about about that far. So we we're talking about you know, pretty good pressure. And I didn't know what to do, so I just stuck my thumb in it oh. and told him to sit down. <laughs> and he did. And I, and someone got a towel, and I just put it around my thumb, but I kept my thumb in there. It went from WCW to the Hogan Show. <laughs>